Hello everyone. This is Lolly and I am back with my paper clip for August of 2023. We have a monthly challenge or theme every month and this month it was flowers or garden. And so this is what I've created and it is a banner paper clip designed to come in from the right side of your page like this. Now it is chunky. It's a chunky little monkey. And I want to show you how I made that. So let's come back out here. So these are buttons from Buttons Galore. And I am going to take a large one and a small one. And the watering can. Let's use kind of the sunflower looking. And maybe this tulip. Is it too much pink? I don't know. We'll use that. Okay, so we'll put the yellow in between those. Do it this way, put the watering can here. I think the green helps to balance. I'm using a three inch paper clip, a piece of cardstock that's five by two and a half, and I scored it two and a half in. Now I am going to fold this, but then I'm going to open it back up to in order to uh, decorate it. First thing I want to do though, is I'm gonna put a little notch on either side here, and you'll see why a little later. And the next thing I need is I'm using a book page. I cut that a two and a half inch square, but then I take, if I use that, it will uh, completely obliterate my paper. So now I'm taking these scissors, which are old deckle edge scissors. If you remember the old days from the Fiskers when everyone had these scrapbooking scissors, I still use mine a lot. <laughs> Do you have supplies in your craft stash that you're still using and you're happy to keep using? Leave a comment down below. And so I want to use a little bit of distress because I just, it's the look I'm going for here. And I could stamp this before doing this. Uh, it doesn't really matter. This is pretty frail. It's an old book. And I'm going to give this a little bit of nudge as well. I, I'm, today I'm using Wendy Vicky's Make Art Perfect Card Adhesive because I had it on hand. It's, it's handy and that's why I'm using it. And you know what, you wanna know a secret. The other reason I'm using this is because I haven't cleaned the nozzle out of my other glue bottle. <laughs> so that's what happens. Now next I'm going to stamp. There is a certain order of doing things. Let's put a little scrap here, and I just want a little bit of the sun. I don't want the whole thing, and I am using today the Lawn Fawn Fundamentals Black Ink Pad. and let that set up a little bit, and then what I'm using is Derwent Ink Tense Pencils. These are great colored pencils, and they, they're like, they're ink, and so when you get them wet they become like ink and it it's permanent and then you can go over it with a different layer later on so I really like that now normally I would probably color on the page and then glue it on but I think in this case my problem is that it's a very frail paper and so it really is better for me if I go ahead and if I go ahead and glue this on first I'm just kind of getting his little cheeks in there you really won't see all of that anyway then I'm going to move this out of the way and use my water paintbrush here and it just dissolves that beautifully so you do want to use a good ink pad that is going to withstand the watercolor. But now that I've got that in there, I am going to put my card on here. And that is because I want to put a little eyelet at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is give a little bead of glue across here. I don't have to do the whole thing, uh, but I do want to pinch this and hold it together to make sure it's not going to come undone on me. There we go, and I'm going to use the small hole punch, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball right in the middle toward the bottom there. I need to do this now because otherwise it's going to be really hard to get my 
tool in here to do that. And you notice I didn't even bother gluing the bottom of the paper clip. You can if you wish. It's really not that critical. The eyelet will help it. If you struggle with eyelets, make sure you look under this video. I will give you a link to my video on how to set perfect eyelets. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm going to use uh, another one of my favorite tools, and that is the shank remover. <clears throat> so I'm going to turn these buttons over and just snap that. And I like to put my hand above it, not touching it so it gets pinched, but above it, because sometimes these little shanks go flying across the floor, across the room, like that one, and <clears throat> I don't want to have to go searching for that. So there we go. I think this is pretty well set up there. And I remember I wanted the this one on this, this side because if I put it here, it's too much green on the one side. So I will put it right there. I will layer these, put this in the middle. And you can see why I did my eyelet first because it's really hard to get my tool in there once I glue those things down, those buttons. So. Let's glue them down and make sure you get a little bit of glue right over that center part or it will come apart because it's two pieces and when I cut that shank off, there's nothing to keep that together. And then slight bit right there, off center this. This was part of the Buttons Galore and More um, monthly subscription kit that I had. Now, I want to make it look like this water in can is actually watering the flowers. So I have this diamond glaze. I'm just kind of drawing little lines there and then little dots like sprinkles. And I'm also dotting like a couple places on the flowers themselves, like they've gotten some water. Okay, and then I'm going to let this whole thing set up. Perfect, perfect. So a couple things left. I'm going to tie the twine around the top, and that's why I have those notches in there, because those notches are going to help the project not slide up or down and keep it right, um, right where I want it. Okay, there's that. And then we just need to add a little charm here and add the bee to the bottom. Now, when I posted this project on Facebook, someone asked how the bee gets assembled or applied. Let me get my jump rings out here. I wish I was coordinated to use all gold rings or whatever, but I'm just not particular. This is silver, the bee is gold. It really doesn't matter. And in order for him to go this way and not twist, I need one jump ring right here, and it needs to be one of the larger ones. I People ask me what size, you know. I just buy jump rings, and I put them all in the same container, and I don't worry about what the measurements are. It's just what I have is what I have. So take the jump ring and then twist it this way. Don't stretch it. So don't stretch it open. Do it like this. <laughs> And then in order to get this to lie on there correctly, flip it over, right side up against the back, and put that through both, and then just slide it back. So I'll show you once more with my fingers. The jump ring is shaped like this. Don't pull the ends apart, twist them like this, and then twist them back. And then we need one more here. And I'm going to look at my tassels. I'm gonna use this little peach one there. I think it kind of goes with the sun. And this is a nice little gold um, tassel right there. I am going to use a gold jump ring there. And make sure you look at the supply list under this video and also check out my entire list of all of my paperclip videos. There are a ton of them for you to binge watch. Now this goes here. Also, take a moment to subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of paper crafts, and I do run the Paperclip Art Group on Facebook with two wonderful admins assisting me. We, we run a great group and to keep you inspired. I think these are really fun, and 
you're going to have fun playing with altered paper clips. Aren't those adorable? They just make me feel so happy. They're so perky and so cute. So look for those supply lists under the videos, and thank you so much for watching.